Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome back. Force here, and today we're going to be checking out Lord of the Rings Return to Moria. This is a new survival crafting game set in the fourth age of Middle-earth. In it, you take on the role of a dwarf out to reclaim your legendary home beneath the Misty Mountains. Now, like most survival crafting games, you start with nothing and build your way up, but instead of taking place out in the woods somewhere, you are in the mines of Moria, and rather than crafting random weapons and tools, you're discovering blueprints for mythical dwarven weapons and armor from the Lord of of the rings. Now today's video is sponsored by North Beach Games. They gave me an early hands-on look at Return to Moria. I got to spend a bunch of time playing the game over these last few days and so today I've got the knowledge and will be bringing you a closer look and telling you what this game is all about. So let's jump right in and check out Return to Moria. So the basic story setup is that the dwarves have decided it's time to return to their ancestral homeland and the call has been set out for everyone from across the land to come and join the effort. So so you and a group of other dwarves are at the western gate attempting to break through an entrance into the mines themselves, but for some reason the door won't budge. While setting up a pile of explosives looking to blast your way through, there is all of a sudden a cave-in, you fall and find yourself now alone on the inside. And this is where things kick off. Searching for a way out, you come across the other side of the western gate only to realize that it was blocked by these dark magical runes. You then head further inside looking for answers. Along the way, you craft some basic tools, a torch to see better in the dark, a simple pickaxe to carve your way through rock and dirt, before coming across a talking raven. Eric is his name, and he gives you some guidance while suggesting that you head east and off you go. So the whole rest of the game basically centers around you searching for an exit, but to do so, you actually have to progress further and deeper into the mines, and all along the way, you will be unlocking new gear and items to help with your adventure, which you will need to access new areas, activate ancient machinery, and defend yourself against the array of wildlife, goblins, orcs, and many other things inhabiting the mines. Now, the game is basically broken up into several thematic areas that mark your progression throughout. As mentioned, you begin at the western gates in the halls by the doors of Durin. Heading east, as the raven suggested, you learn to craft some more things, an improvised axe, which you'll use to fend off some wildlife and small groups of goblins, scattered about, and then you venture further until you eventually stumble across this old abandoned camp, and this acts as your very first base of operations. Here you'll craft the initial bits, a hearth which is needed to establish a base, it basically gives you an area in which to build. Also, you can use the hearth for cooking, as the game does have hunger mechanics. You'll lay down a bedroll, which is where you go to sleep, regenerating health and stamina, and then also removing any exhaustion debuffs you might acquire. You'll place down some chests used for storage which is necessary as this game has tons of different items, materials, and resources you'll be collecting. And then you will rebuild a furnace, which is used to refine ore into ingots. Now, after rebuilding that furnace, which you'll do somewhere between like 20 and 30 minutes into the game, you are then guided to a nearby iron ore vein. And here you're introduced to the very first buff mechanic. Basically, while you are mining, you will occasionally be struck with inspiration, at which point you start to sing a song. Now, completing this song will get, then give you a buff, which removes removes the stamina cost while mining, which is pretty huge, uh, and this will last for several minutes. Now, there's multiple different types of buffs and different ways you can get buffs in the game, but this mining one is one of the first ones you're introduced to, and it is entirely useful, and also kind of cool because it's like thematically correct, right? You're the dwarves are out there swinging away, singing a song to help pass the time and make the work a bit easier. So you've got your stuff, you head back to base, turn the ore into ingots, and then those ingots are used to rebuild a forge, and then at that forge, you craft your very first, like, good set of gear gear basically, which is an iron sword and iron hills shield. And this is your early introduction to the game's different tiers of items that are above the field crafting, which basically brings us to how progression works in this game. Field crafting is what you start with. These are the items that you can make early on and can be crafted easily as well as on the go. So as mentioned, this will include like improvised weapons, basically your tier zero weapons to start at the very beginning of the game, but then also basic tools like the torch, pickaxe, and making your first backpack extra storage space on the go. And then eventually you learn to craft more things like flares, but most importantly hammers. And this is a tool needed to rebuild statues, which is unlocking recipes. And this is a big part of your overall progression in the game. Now, as mentioned, 
the game is broken up into multiple distinct themed locations that you move through as you progress throughout the story. But these areas not only visually look different, but they also have their own unique resources, items, recipes, and enemies. And this is all how the game's moving through the progression works. You start in that first area, those halls by the Western Gate, and here is where you have access to tier number one. So that includes, yes, that iron sword and shield that you can craft at the forge right away, but also there are lots of additional things that you will discover as you play. The game has multiple collectible and research mechanics within it. At the beginning, those include items that are locked within a chest, which you will have to craft unique keys to open, as well as statues. So you move through the halls in this first area, and you will occasionally come across these broken statues. Now to repair those, you need that initial starter hammer, as well as some stone, which you just get from mining pretty much anything that you're able to mine, as well as just breaking down random stuff that's in the environment. Like if you see a pile of stones or a stone wall for a, a building of sorts, you can break it down and get some stone. So you take that stone with the hammer and you repair a statue. That is actually going to unlock one of several different armor and weapon pieces, recipes that are unique to that region. So the general progression of this game is basically broken down like this. You will, whatever area that you're in, you explore the area, picking up any items and resources you come across. You'll mine stones and any ore veins that you see, open chests, which require those keys, or they can be broken into actually if you deal enough damage. You find altars. These are also scattered about, replacing carvings that you pick up in the environment. Putting them on the altars opens them up to reveal some hidden treasure inside, usually pretty valuable stuff. And you rebuild any statue you come across, because this is one of the major your progression points, every statue you rebuild will unlock one of the available recipes for that tier of weapons and armor that is exclusive to the area that you're within. So doing all this, you then have the stuff you need, you discover the recipes, you get the resources and the materials to construct your own armor, weapons, and new tools like the next tier of hammer and pickaxe, which then prepares you to move forward, continuing throughout the mines and moving forward in progression, going to those new regions, which also means means starting all of that over again. So at the start of the game, you will go through that entire process in those Western halls, and that will prepare you to head to the next area, which is the Elven Quarter, very different from the Western halls. This is a lush underground forest, basically, and inside of it, all new and more difficult enemies for you to fight, things like orcs and cave bears, other sorts of wildlife. You're also introduced to hordes here at one point, which are just like these massive waves of goblins and orcs charging at you. But also, again, yes, there will be new resources, new recipes, and new treasure to discover. There's also this massive elven forge, this like unique point of interest located in this elven quarter. And you're able to go there once you repair it, which is like a whole sort of like mini game puzzle solving. You look for pieces, you put them back, you repair the forge, and then you're able to craft unique items. And the game has lots of stuff like this, these unique points of interest and areas dotted along the way as you're progressing from one region to the next. Now, in the the elven quarter yes you go through and you repeat basically the same process you did in the western halls explore picking up items and resources mine that next tier of ore veins getting more stone and, and wood and other things opening chests replacing carvings and altars rebuilding statues to unlock the new recipes the next tier and then building that armor weapons and another new set of tools that prepares you to push forward and that process continues as you move from the elven quarter into the next stage of things, which is the Mines of Moria, these massive mines with uh, tunnels sprawling in every direction and huge vertical spaces lined with scaffolding, into Orc Town, this densely populated orc gathering place that even has a boss at the end of it, down the Crystal Descent, which is this deep crystalline laden shaft that leads into the Lower Deeps, another region, this marshy area full of mushrooms and poisonous plants, and from the Lower Deeps you progress further and further into new areas, again going further further, going deeper into the mines. That is how this game is structured. That is how it works with each area containing its own resources, its own unique items to find, its own tier of gear and weapons to craft, and also new wildlife, new enemies, new bosses, and more unique content. The game is basically structured in, and divided into two main types of content. There are the distinct unique locations, like the introduction area, like the main hall of the Elven Quarter, for example, or the intro to the Mines of Moria. Those will be like handcrafted 
shifted and very distinct, but then all of this has offshoots and connecting tiles in between them that are procedurally placed. Basically, the main story, narrative bits, and big important points of interest, those are static. The bits in between connecting are all procedural, and that's part of what makes this game different every time you spin up a new seed, because yes, this is one of those survival games that has like seed-based procedural generation for the world. You make a new world, it makes a new seed, which is going to be a new combination of things, but there are rather distinct kind of like I said static uh, big points of interest that are a part of the progression through the game. There's also named boss fights. There is a, uh, a boss in that orc camp. There are massive trolls. There are even krakens and a whole bunch of other different sorts of enemies and, and bosses and things you might expect to come across in the Lord of the Rings. Many of those are present here in Return to Moria. So that is a basic overview of the game. I want to dive into a f some more specifics and details. Um, the inventory system and gear in the game. There's basically four gear slots, the helm, the chest, hands, and leg pieces. And as I mentioned, the gear that you get will be crafted. Learning to craft those things either comes as part as unlocking a, a new production area, but mostly comes from rebuilding those statues and unlocking those recipes as a result. You've got your backpack. You start off with a basic backpack. As you progress, you'll make larger backpacks that have more storage. There's also a stats tab in the game with a whole bunch of detailed information, numerical values for all these different stats in the game as a pertains to your survival, your combat capabilities, your damage resistances, and your energy and stamina regeneration. You do have a map which will lay out all of the tiles more or less, these connected pieces, those main areas that are like pre-established, but all of the procedural ones in between. Outside of laying out the tiles for you as you unlock them and progress through them, it's also going to show you the location of any important places like any camps that you've established, any major goals or quest objectives basically, and any fast travel locations as the game does have a fast travel system, but it's pretty limited in that you actually have to construct or rebuild existing map stones, these little structures that are, are used to fast travel from one to another. Again, pretty limited. These aren't really freely available. Eventually, you will learn uh, how to craft these yourself and you can place them down, but they do actually require a fairly rare resources resource in order to place. The game, of course, has building. Um, you are a dwarf. You are mining resources. You are mining ore as well as stone and various types of wood, and you use those to build a bases. And what's pretty cool is you can actually build a base basically anywhere. The game does have a lot of like these pre-established abandoned camps basically. And they do tend to act as natural points for you to set up a base. Like it makes sense because you'll have things that are just broken down and require a few resource or a few resources for you to quickly rebuild. But honestly, you can build wherever you like. As you're progressing through the game in any location for the most part, you are able to set up a camp. All that requires is placing down a hearth and then having the resources to start building building stuff, building new crafting and production stations, building up walls and doors and all sorts of stuff. The actual placement of things, the types of things you can put down is floors, walls, columns, as well as types of scaffolding. As you play and progress, you unlock more and more uh, ones of higher strength because they have different resources that you use to build them. Tons of different crafting and production things. You've got essentials like your bedroll for resting, the memorial flame, which is like a buff system. You gather these little carvings, you construct a memorial flame, and it gives you a buff when you interact with it. Those map stones for fast traveling, and there's also like base torches you can place for just some nice lighting. There are various types of hearths in the game, so you start with a basic camping hearth, and then you uh, then you progress to a stone hearth, and there's even more beyond that. The stronger the hearth, the larger the space in which you can build, and also those hearths are used for that cooking. And there's also additional types of cooking things, like ovens, brew kettles, and alchemical stills, different types of storage things, like a wooden chest and treasure piles, another way of uh, getting buffs in this game. Farming things, like farm patches and box. There's tons of handicraft locations. You'll place down workbenches, looms, ink grinders, and rune tables. And these are just different sorts of things that you can produce gear and items. The game also has like an enchanting system where you can basically put runes on uh, weapons and it, it, it greatly enhances them, adding various buffs. Like I got one that was anti-orcs. And so it did more damage to orcs on whatever I put that rune on. But also my weapon would glow and make a sound whenever any orcs were nearby. Very thematically correct to the Lord of the Rings. It's pretty cool to see different metal working stations like furnaces, bellows, forges, and gem cutters. And then resource pellets is you're going to have a lot of different types of wood, ore, and ingots. And these give you a nice location to uh, store them inside of your base. So that is pretty much Lord of the Rings Return to Moria. It is once more, as said at the top, a survival game where you play as a dwarf in the Lord of the Rings setting, going through the mines. And it, I've just, I've enjoyed my time with it. I think it's pretty interesting. And hopefully this video provided you a good baseline of information information um, to see if some, this is
is something that you yourself might be interested in. If you are, Lord of the Rings Return to Moria is going to be priced at $39.99. It will be initially launching on PC via the Epic Game Store, coming out on October the 24th. Uh, later, it'll be coming on December the 5th to PlayStation 5, and they will eventually be getting an Xbox Series X and S release. Uh, that will be coming soon, although that exact date as of yet has to be announced. If you're interested and want to check out the game, of course, it would be super helpful if you check out the link in the description below. And yeah, that's going to do it for today. Thank you for watching. Hope the vid was helpful and useful, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy, guys.